Hey folks, there's more help than you can shake a kayak at on the web. So go to the web in the how-to zone at techtv.com forward slash help. Here you're going to find lots of tips, articles, tricks to get you out of your tech blues, whatever they might be. And uh, Leo? you got to be the only guy stuff. I know who checks a kayak on an airplane. When you get on an airplane, yes. you, you, you gotta, bring you your do kayak it. with you. No, no, I, I got it out there. Oh, you bought a kayak? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yes. It was a gift? It was a birthday gift? No, Terry's good to me, but he's not that good to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's cool. I want to watch you kayak, I guess. Someday. That's a scary thought. Get to the interview. This is the good stuff. I know. What am I wasting <laughs> time with you for? We see you every day. Our next guest is somebody, I just by virtue of the fact that the studio is filled with fans from Tech TV who are here to see him. He is obviously somebody that screensavers are interested in. His books, his Sandman comics, have been cornerstone reading for uh, many of you and the screensavers staff. I'm really thrilled to have the creator of the Sandman, Neil Gaiman, in here with us. It's great to meet you, Neil. Thank you, Leo. You're a Brit. I am, yes. But guilty. you don't live in Britain. I don't. I've been living out here for about nine years now. Now, you have, you could, because you're a writer, live anywhere in the world. You have selected, as your home, Minneapolis? Well, they, they told me it had really mild winters. <laughs> um, Bad choice. Being English, I believe. Why Minneapolis? I, really boring. My, my wife is American, uh -huh. and uh, we thought it would be nice for the kids to get to meet that side of the family. It's actually a great and town. I told, I told my wife that if she could find me an Adams Family house, Really? Do you I, have an Adams family? I have house? an Adams family. House. You mean like with the spires and the kind of it's, Rococo it's fence it's up front? Exactly. And the, I don't have the Rococo fence. Are I you really crazy like and them. kooky? You're really kind of spooky? No, I'm really dull. You're altogether ooky? I have no imagination. I'm just, I'm just... <laughs> I hear you have great Halloween parties, though. Guy Fawkes. Guy Fawkes, of course. It's Guy Fawkes, the British... because I'm English. So yeah, right. Huge bonfires. What is that, November? Uh... November the 5th. The 5th. Do you really have bonfires? I really do. In Do you burn ones. a guy? Yep. The, the, the Guy Fawkes in effigy that's traditionally burned yep. in Britain. I, we, we still, you know, remember he was the only person ever to nearly blow up blow the up Houses of Parliament. <laughs> and the British just love a good loser. You know, he came so close. Have, you, had, did you, have you always had a taste for the macabre? Oh, I think so. Is I that mean, kind of... I, I'm the only in? person I know that whenever I go to New York, I pay my little visit to the coolest art gallery in New York. What's that? Um, the coolest art gallery in New York. Yeah. This is a secret. Okay, shh. Um, oh, wait, we're not telling anyone, just you and me. If you go to New York Public Library yeah. on 5th and 40th, that yeah. big one with, with the, the giant lions, lions. Yep. Okay. and you go up to the third floor yeah. and you follow the signs to the men's toilet. <laughs> I'm not liking where we're going here. Yeah. You will get to the Charles Adams Gallery. <sighs> and it's about, uh, it's, <sighs> it's about 15 feet long and it's just two blank walls. And it's literally on the way to the men's toilet. The great New Yorker And cartoonist. it's hung with these Charles Adams originals. Oh. So you actually get to see them. You're right. And every time the I'm in New, York, in New York, I, I sneak down to the best art gallery in New York. Let's take a break. Neil Gaiman is our guest. We're going to talk about his new book, which actually is some interesting uh, stuff for Internet users. And it's American Gods, it's called. And now on the top 10 New York Times bestseller list. You just got that news today. Congratulations. 20 minutes ago. Yay. We'll talk more with Neil right after this. Welcome back to the Screen Savers. Leo Laporte here. Coming up in this half hour, we're going to talk to the man who started it all, Marty Cooper. This is the greatest show we've ever done. I hope you're taping this thing. The father of the cell phone, the guy who invented the cell phone, is like here. Is he a saint or is he a sinner? <laughs> we'll see what he thinks. Plus, we're going to show you a great Windows tip for adding your own logo to your system properties box. Before the break, we introduced you to the legendary author of DC's Sandman comics, Neil Gaiman. It's so great to have you here, Neil. Sandman is really amazing. Thank you. It just, uh, now, I might be wrong, because I'm, I'm not a big comic you know, fan. I'm, I've read the Sandman. Is it, was it a breakthrough for comics? It seems to me that it was a first comic really aimed at adults with like real... I, I think there have been comics aimed at adults for, for the hundred years that there have been I guess comics. So. Um, I think we did some very, very cool things that nobody had done, and we got a whole audience of people who just didn't yeah. read comics. Me. People, uh, well, a lot of people who didn't think comics were for them. Yeah, it was graphic uh, novel kind and of. And women. I mean, people like, basically, right. it was you and women. Me and women. Um, okay, well, that's good company. I've never take read it. comics before. Interesting. Um, why, was, why did women uh, like them? I think because they have real stories, and they weren't about, yeah. you know, adolescent. Gi giant adolescent superheroes hitting each other through That's walls right. and then saying, now you've made me really angry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you start with comics or did you start with uh, prose? I did. I, I dabbled in both. I mean, one of yeah. the first books I ever did was, uh, before I wrote any comics, was a book called Don't Panic, 
about the late great Douglas Adams. No kidding. And it was kind of a his biography. It, it was a kind of combination biography companion, that kind of thing. Another guy we loved very much and, 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 and miss, miss a lot very much. Yeah. yeah. Um, then I did a novel with Terry Pratchett called Good, Good Omens, Omens, which I loved. Just, which, and I love Terry Pratchett yeah. too. Oh, well, I mean, I, th I think Good Omens is quite probably the funniest novel ever written about the end of the world and how we're all going right. to die. And you the know, uh, Horsemen of the Apocalypse. The four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. <laughs> and the other four, Terry Gilliam is now meant to be filming it. So no. Yes. That'll be wonderful. Isn't that perfect? Is that your first movie? Uh, I guess, yeah. I mean, I did the English script for Princess Mononoke last year. Oh, that the, was a, the anime movie. Yeah, yeah. Which, people love yeah, that. Exactly. I didn't see it, but people love that. Oh, it's marvelous. So you you're basically a cult. Whatever it is you do is a cult, right? Pretty Small. Much. Devoted, maniacal, much like the screensaver. Exactly. Science. That's that's why. I'm Do you mind that? Home. Do you want to be more mainstream? I mean, does... I'm not sure what mainstream is. No, and as I say, you know, 20 minutes before I came on the air, I got a cell phone call from the president of HarperCollins saying, "I think I should let you know I have an advanced thing great? of the New York Times list in front of me, and you're Isn't in there at number great? 10 with with American God." This is an interesting story. I haven't read it yet, but I was talking to uh, Annalisa, your friend here, who works at uh, Tech TV. She says it's about gods coming to America, the old gods, the Norse yeah. gods, the Greek gods. Nobody believes them anymore. They're losing their power, but there's a new kind of god replacing them. We've got the gods of the internet, the gods of the cell phone, the gods of the freeways. Because that's what we believe in and now. And media, the things that people sacrifice their time to, the things they believe in. Isn't that interesting? And it was really fun trying to get these wonderful old... These old sort of roadside attraction kind of gods. Right. Um, they're, they're grifting, they're driving cabs, they're hooking. And then we've got these new gods who are riding, riding around in limos. <laughs> and, uh, but, but they're all rather nervous too because they know that the future, we eat the future very, very fast here. That's right. Faster you know, than any uh, culture ever. The, yeah. 19, the future of 1990 is a long time ago yeah, now. That's right. And that's uh, right. so they're nervous too. Now you've got a computer in your life. Do you write on a computer? Is that yes, would you be writing I, a novel on that? Actually, no. What I'm writing right now is I'm sitting doing my blogger entry no. for, the, for the American Gods Journal. No. Yes. Tell me about that. You blog. I blog. Tell uh, me about your blog. Blog I is a log on the web where you update it. It's like a diary, online yeah, diary. On, online journal. But public, there's your blog right there on the screen. My God, that's my, it's, it's my blog. It's my blog. It's famous. Um, yes. I started it in February because I really wanted to take people through Backstage, the experience of bringing a book out. You I had just it, finished the book when I you started. I handed it. in the finished manuscript, yeah. and I said, "Great, now we're going to do this blog." We went live with AmericanGods.com. We've now moved over to NeilGaiman.com, and I wrote these. I just write about what was going on. I, I think too many people believe that what actually happens is an author writes the words "the end" at right. the end of the manuscript, puts it in an envelope, it goes off to the publisher, right. and six months later, the editor phones up and says, "Dear boy." You're on the bestseller list, and that was all that happened. That's all the work the author did. And of course, I, I, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. So I took them through copy editing, and wow. why authors are not allowed to very often know who their copy editor is. Because you'll call them up at home we in the middle of the night. We call them up at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so that comma belongs right there. Exactly. I put it there for a reason. So I put that in, and I put the whole thing about galley proofs in, and oh, that's um, great. Separating words, and then the process of getting blurbs. You know, you send out novels. Right. Who gives you blurbs? You've got Why? Stephen King on here, Peter Straub. You've got Chris Carter of uh, X Files fan, William Gibson. William Gibson, Teller, Penn and Teller, which I think is as cool as you can get when he actually speaks and writes something. He says American Gods is sexy, thrilling, dark, funny, and poetic. But he says that about everything. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not about Penn. <laughs> not about Penn. You're right. Uh, very, I mean, it's very, it's very uh, cool to read about the process. But the funny thing about blogs is you start really writing about. Stuff that's so personal and, and inside. Are you, does it feel kind of funny to be exposing all this stuff online? It was really, it, it didn't feel funny at all when I started because yeah. there were like, you know, 500 people. Nobody we, was reading it. Nobody was reading it. We didn't right. tell anybody. There was right. no advertising, there was no promotion. It was just me doing my little blog. And then, you know, one day you look up and you've got 150,000 people looking over your and shoulder. CNN is talking about it. They did an article this morning on CNN.com. Um, and they call it what a new you guys way. Of, could find it. Did they, we could find it. Let's yeah. see CNN.com. See if you, Megan, could you pull up CNN.com and see if we could find the article about Neil's blog? What did they What did they say about well, it? Well, they were they were talking about it as, as basically a marketing tool. It was this brilliant. They were going over the, the brilliant, <laughs> He's a brilliant way. Brilliant marketer. This, the, the American <laughs> Gods have become this huge success because of. Do you think um, this helps sell the book? No. I don't know if it helps sell the book. What it did do was get an awful lot of people who knew that the book, or, or didn't know, who like my fiction, who right. like me, um, 
We're directly your fans. Know, we want to yeah. see you and talk to you and, those, and read your stuff intimately, but, more intimately. And what it did was it let those people know the book was coming out. Yeah. yeah. Which meant that so they the first week the, of publication, right. all of the fans who might have bought it over a period of two or three months marched out bought the book, put it on the New York Times list, so that copy. really worked. You, what is this you're uh, using? This is my Libretto L1, which I bought. It's so tiny. Because, well, I'm, I'm on the road now for six weeks. Right, big tour. Signing books yep. across America, fly across to England, do it again, fly up to Canada, do it again. Right. And I thought, I want something that. that is tiny. It weighs nothing. It's got an almost full-size keyboard. I got it Would from you write a novel on that, or? I could. I certainly could write a novel on that. I, I've I actually heard you given write longhand. Up, I was going to say, I've given up writing fiction on the whole, and first draft on the computer. I've gone over you to these things. You, and it's why a is fountain that? pen. I love you fountain fill it pens, but I don't know if I'd want to write a book in a fountain pen. Because I love the disparity and the division between a first and second draft. Does it help your prose, if, you think? No, well, if you write on a computer, it's only ever first draft. Yeah. It, it's a first draft that gets Constantly better. It's a rolling, yeah. I, rolling, improving first right, draft. Right. What I like about writing something by hand and then having to type it in it really is was it makes me go, first. OK, that really was the first draft. Yeah. Now I can fix it. Neil, it's such a pleasure. I could spend three hours talking with you. It is, uh, what, what can I say? Thank you for your great work, oh, for entertaining us, for amusing us, for terrifying us. It's really fun. And maybe the next time we're in Minneapolis, we can come say hi and go to a party. Thank yeah, you, Neil Gaiman. Really good. Thank really you. a pleasure. Did you find the website? Let's see it. This is the CNN website where they say Neil Gaiman is a marketing genius mm -hmm. for his blog. <laughs> they discovered blogs, ladies and gentlemen, on, on CNN. CNN. <laughs> if you want to read about Neil Gaiman and technology, check out thescreensavers.com and buy his book, yes. American Gods. Thank you, Neil. You're welcome. Okay. Now, Patrick, don't go anywhere. Stay don't here. Stay anywhere. right there. Uh, don't move. No. Haven't they told you the rules of TV? Patrick is going <laughs> to. They here, do I'm going to leave. Forgot. Patrick is going to tell you what's coming up. What's next, Patrick? Uh, Leo, I didn't know we actually paid attention to the rules on this show. No, we you know, that's Up next, add more custom graphics on your Windows PC when the screensavers continues. You can move now, Neil. <laughs>